you so much indeed. Murakoze chani. I want to bring greetings, okay, from my church in Malaysia to Apostle, okay, it was uh, the family, all the pastors, leaders, and everyone who here in Zion Temple. It is such a great joy to be with all of you here today. I love your African worship. You are gonna come and teach us how to dance, how to sing. How to yeah, our song is not as noisy as all of you sing, which is fantastic. <laughs> Because it means that there's life and energy here in this wonderful place. Amen. Amen. And the wonderful thing about preaching African churches is this. When you make a good point in a sermon, they say, Hallelujah, preach it, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Uh, the more Amen you say, my preaching gets better and better. Amen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you Amen. so much indeed. Amen. But friends, you know, if my preaching is really flat, nothing in my preaching. Some of you might say to me, oh Jesus, Jesus, help the preacher, help the preacher today. I'm sure you will not treat me like this. So again, thank, thank you again very much for your warm welcome and hospitality. It's a, such a great joy to connect with uh, Apostle uh, Gitwasa. And we were over the phone just last Thursday night over dinner in a hotel, actually. And you've got a wonderful man of God leading this great church here. Yeah, so we rejoice and celebrate with all of you. I've been asked to preach this uh, today on the subject of uh, the whole year, giving thanks to God for all things. And the passage of scripture assigned to me is Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 20. So in the church that I preach in, in my own church in Malaysia, Whenever Bible verses are projected onto the screen, I get everybody in my church to read aloud with me together. You know why I do that? Because sometimes it's the only time they read the Bible in a whole week. I, I know I'm not talking about you all in Zion wonderful temple. Because you all cannot wait to read and dine to read the Bible. Amen. Amen. So why don't we stand in order to God's word and read aloud with me those who can in English. Amen. 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 So why don't we stand in order to God's word and read aloud those who can in English. Okay. Together with the English, those who can. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kuko mwiri inde chani uko mujenda mutagenda ngawa tajuru bengi ahu go mujenda ngawa ngawa nyab bengi mutungu zuri mwete kuku misi arimibi nuko ni mukawa wapfu ahu go mumeni chima na umami watu ashaka kandi ni muga sini nzoga ziri mwa kuvagani. Ahubwo muzuru umwuka mukirane zawuri n'indirimbo nibihimbano by'umwuka muririmba mucurangira umwami wacu mu mitima yanyu mujye mushima imana data wa twese kubwe ibintu byose mubishimira mu izina ry'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo amen let us pray katusenge our father we ask you to take your word by your holy spirit and speak to every one of us 
data twongiye kukwinginga kugira ngo uze abari wowe ufata uyo mwanya umwuka wawe abari wuganza amasukanirize imitima yacu and grandfather we will respond to your word indeed kandi data natwe turaza kwitabiriza ijambo ryawe in jesus wonderful name ni mwizi nari himbaje ry'umwami wacu yesu amen amen well once there was a farmer who brought his cow to town bimwe habayeho umushumba ngorozi yaratwaye inkaye umuji and the farmer brought his long horned Rwandan cow to the town. And the farmer said to the people in the town, I will present this cow of mine to me if any one of you can fulfill three wishes of mine. So everybody in the town, they were very excited about it. Well, said the farmer, firstly, I want you to make my buffalo cry. People pinch the buffalo, hit the buffalo, the buffalo did not cry. And then the pastor of the town came along and said, The pastor, could I try? And so the pastor went up here of the cow, whispers in the cow, and the cow started crying, crying. Secondly, the farmer said, I want you to make my cow laugh. People tickle the, the cow, make monkey faces and swing and dance, the cow did not laugh at all. Well, the pastor said, could I try? And the pastor went to the buffalo, whispers in the buffalo, and the buffalo laugh and laugh and laugh like crazy. And the pastor went to the buffalo, and well, thirdly, said the farmer, I want to make my buffalo run. People push the buffalo, drag the buffalo, the, 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 the strong stick buff, you don't move a single inch. And the pastor said, could I try one more time? And so the pastor, when he hear the buffalo, whispers it, and the buffalo bolted off. Well, the farmer said to the pastor, what do you do to my buffalo before I present it to you as a gift? Well, firstly, the pastor said, I tell the buffalo how hard I work as a pastor. And the pastor said, I tell the buffalo how hard I work as a pastor. I suppose your buffalo took pity upon me and started to cry and cry. Second, I told the buffalo, uh, I told your cow how much salary I'm paid every month. When the buffalo, when the cow heard how hard I work and how little salary I'm paid, your cow couldn't believe it and the cow started to, to laugh and laugh and laugh. Imaze kumva umushahara mpembwa nakazi nkora iratangara cyane ubona tari ibintu bikwitangira kunseka. Well, thirdly, I told your cow. Now you want to be a pastor, and a cow ran off. Well, the pastor said, "How many of you? You want to be a pastor, see your hands." Oh, my my goodness! Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, thirdly, I told the farmer, "Now you want to be a pastor, and a cow ran off." Well, my goodness! Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, thirdly, I told the Oh, so many want to be a pastor. Wonderful. God bless all of you. I love being a pastor. As you know, I left my engineer to become a pastor. Well, one day I went to work in my office. Because I get to travel all over the world. And I get to meet all the nicest people in the whole world. Say to your neighbor, he is talking about you. Yeah, what a joy to meet all of you here this afternoon. Friends, in the work of God, you and I need to be always thankful and grateful. You and I... Friends, you and I must give thanks to God for all the blessings He has brought into our lives. 
Amen. Amen. Listen, and so therefore Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 tells us like this. It says always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the blessings God has brought upon our lives? God for example has brought upon our lives health and strength. The fact that we're here in church today, it means that we're healthy and strong. Amen. Amen. Because there are some who want to come to church because they're not well, they could not come to church. And I see many strong people here in Rwanda. But they're not well. strong people here in Rwanda. Yesterday we were taken to a community where we were told to try to carry some water up the hill. And we were told that the So my son and I had to carry water up your hill here in Rwanda. And we were told my son is 39 years old. I am 68 years old. We are grandparents of two grandchildren. But you know, we only carry, carry one gallon up the hill. I, I saw 13, 4 year old boys carry 20 gallons up the hill. I thought to myself, my goodness, you Rwandan people, very strong, healthy. So we must talk. We must not take for granted our health and strength. Amen, isn't it? But Amen. also we going to give thanks to God, friends, for family, friends, and the church as well. It is a great joy and privilege to belong to a church like this, isn't it? Because we must not take for granted. So I came from a Buddhist background. My whole family all Buddhist. And when I was a high school teacher before I went to do engineering. This was back in 1971 as a high school teacher. I struggle about the meaning of life. There's a sense of emptiness and loneliness in my heart. And out of that, I came to faith in Jesus Christ, born again. It radically transformed my life. It shaped my thinking. That's why years later, I was willing to give up my engine to become a pastor of a church. And it's a huge privilege to become a pastor of a church. Amen. Because everywhere we go, there's always a body of Christ in any country we can be part of. So I tell people anywhere we travel in the world. If we want to have a drink, we just need a shot Coca-Cola. And if you want to take a ride, you just shout taxi. Everybody in the world knows. But if you want fellowship, what do you say? You say hallelujah. And everybody in the world knows. Amen. Amen. So if you one fellowship here in a great city of Kigali, I just need to walk around your city and give a hallelujah. Everybody will follow me after that. So what a joy and privilege to belong to the church and wonderful friends like this. 
which we must not take for granted. Amen. Amen. The third area you and I must give thanks to God for is our nation and the nation's leaders for spiritual, social, and political. I'm blessed and inspired, for example, by what I read about your political leaders in this great nation. Now, how many of you, you experienced the genocides, the said genocide in 1994, yourself, your family, or some come experience? Can I see your hands? Yeah, can I see your hands? Yeah. So many of you, God bless. It must be a great pain in the heart of many of you, I'm sure. But friends, think about it. In just 25 years of nation, they turned around completely. It is a sign of great leadership in your country. And we must celebrate and give thanks to God. In my friends, everywhere around the world, I've been boasting about your leaders and your political leaders. It is something, for example, we in Malaysia can learn from. In just, in just 25 years, this whole nation turned around. Friends, this is unheard of in any nation in the whole world. So, every one of you, you should give thanks to God and rejoice and celebrate on this very, very wonderful thing. And so, I want to commend you all and your political leadership in this country. So I'm involved in journey with my politicians in Malaysia as well. I mentor them. I take time to meet with them on a regular basis. I pray for them. And, and so some of these have become ministers of the government today in Malaysia. And so we're going to stand with them and pray for them and support them in every way possible. So that I commend all of you for your great leadership here in, our, in this nation. Amen. Amen. And it's amazing that your leaders could get everyone here to do community work one Saturday every month. Friends, this is really amazing. The former U.S. President Bill Clinton was asked, What are the three top leaders in the world you will name as commendable? And you know, friends, Bill Clinton said, one of the three is your country's president, Paul Kagame. Clinton yeah, it's, it's unheard of for a president to ever convince a whole nation to do community work once a month. Amen. Amen. I need to go back and do this for my own country as well. So can you pray for me? Uh, you are such a good example for all of us. Not, not easy for us in Malaysia. So you are just wonderful people of God. We must rejoice and give thanks to God. Amen. But also we must thank God for his protection and provision. How God has protected every one of us. I mean the fact that for example you all which I salute. Okay, that you affect your life. God has protected your life amazingly. Much as we feel sad and we grieve over those loved ones of ours who have been killed. 
But God has a purpose in keeping your life well and safe and so that you can testify to God's work. So the fact that we are alive, it means you and I got work to do here on earth. Amen. Amen. So God has protected your life, my life, and every one of us here. But friends, we must also thank God for his presence and his power. The amazing work of God in all our lives. It's it. All of us must really thank God again and again. How many of you, you have experienced miracles or healings in your life and I see your hands? Can I see your hands? Wonderful. You see, when I was young, I, su I suffer from arthritis. When I was only 13, 14 years old. And arthritis is when your bones, all, all your bones become very painful and swollen. And, you can't move. and sometimes my hand. The arthritic pain here is so difficult, I can't even move my hand. And it's a great pain. I couldn't, I couldn't even put my shirt on properly. So I suffer for over 20 years. When I went full time and served God. I say God have mercy upon me. I really want to serve you. But God touched my life and healed me. So I can really press on the serve God. And God in his mercies and grace healed me completely. So that I can run up the hill. No problems whatsoever. In fact, last year my son and I, we come up, climb Mount Annapurna in Nepal, the 10th highest peak in the whole world. It is over 8,000 meters high. The, the but I didn't climb to the top because it will kill me. We, we climbed to the base camp. Even the base camp is over 4,000 meters high. It takes six days to climb up. And three days to come down. And thank God I survived the six days climbing up. And so at the age of 67, I climb up the hill. God can do this for all of us. Amen. The amazing friends, power and presence of God in our lives. We must, we must also thank God for His pleasure and His favor upon us. For example, the jobs we all have. The work we can be involved in doing. The way we can reach out to serve people. It is just amazing grace and favor of God upon our lives. How God opened doors for us. And, and how God will lead us into all kinds of opportunities to make a difference and bless people. It's a huge blessing and favor of God upon all our lives. Amen. 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 So Amen. we praise God for His blessings upon us. But friends, you, know, you and I must also praise God, okay, for His stretchings. How, how many of us we gone through some challenges or problems in our lives? Can I see your hands? Wow, wow, okay. God bless you. God bless all of you. Even my hands is up as well. Amen. God bless all of you. Even my hands is up as well. Amen. Why does sometimes God allow challenges and problems to happen to us in our life? He wants to make us strong. You see, when we go to challenges and problems in life, what should be our attitude? 
And this is how friends the Apostle James tells us like this. In James chapter 1 and verse 2. James, James said, Consider pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. We are supposed to thank God in spite of the trials, problems of the but also you notice friends, Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 5 and in verse 3. Paul says, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Paul says, not only so, but we also not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. So friends, it's amazing how Christians look at sufferings or problems in life. It is not for us to be angry with the problems. It is to ask God, Lord, what are you teaching me through the problems? Because in the problems that we're going through in life, God's purpose is, is to make us stronger. Better in character. But also greater in maturity. This is what God wants to do in our lives. And so that's why friend James writes again further in James chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may mature and complete, not lacking anything. So you notice, friends, all this is under the mature us as a Christian, a child of but also James, so Paul writes to us like this in Romans 5 verses 3 to 5. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So friends, God allow all these things to go through us in our life in order to stretch us, strengthen us and make us more strong. It is to make us better in life and not bitter in life. Amen. 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 This is so important for you and I to approach suffering, for example. That when we go through, we ask God, Lord, what is you teaching me? And helping me to be more responsible living up my Christian faith. And so, friends, God is teaching us, is it, and maturing us and stretching us in a wonderful way. Friends, don't let me give thanks to God for all his blessings. We give thanks to God only for all his stretchings. But, but thirdly, friends, we give thanks to God for his work and the witness we all can bear. See, sometimes, friends, we go to sufferings in life. And friends, the sufferings that you and I go through is also found in the many servants of God in the Bible. So for example, Job in the Old Testament. He suffered a lot in his life. Job has got ten children. And he has got a lot of possessions and property. And he's been faithful in serving God. He's a man of integrity. But suddenly one day, all his children and everything else is removed from him. But, but Job kept his faith and his faithfulness. 
Even his wife is upset with Job. I know Job's wife is not like all the wives here from Rwanda. All the, all the wives and ladies in Rwanda are all very good people. Amen. Amen. That all the wives and ladies will not say the same thing as Mrs. Job who said to Job himself. What did Mrs. Job say to Job? When he Mr. Job said to Job, curse God and die. And thank God Job did not listen to his wife. And so sometimes, friends, sometimes, sometimes we also should be careful about listening to our wife. Amen. But most of the time our wives are always correct. Amen. Amen. Hello, isn't it? Most of the time our wives are always correct. Amen. Amen. But sometimes we need to pray before we listen to our wives. And so, uh, how did Job say to his wife? See, Job chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Okay. okay. Now, his wife said to him, Are you still holding on to integrity? Curse God and die. Job replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we, shall we accept good from God and not trouble in all this? Job did not sin in what he said. So thank God for once Job did not listen to his wife. But most of the time, all the wives are correct. Amen. But occasion, the wife may not be correct. Amen. Isn't Amen. It? Right? Amen. And thank God, Job did not listen to his wife this time. So you and I know, friends, sometimes we go to problems in life. God allows us to stretch us and make us strong. That we want to believe in spite of that God is still very good towards all of us. Amen. Amen. But like for example, I think of a friend of mine, a medical doctor. Very brilliant guy. He studied Oxford University in England, graduated as a doctor. No, afite imamya kushowazi yu ya ya doctor yu ya 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 doctora. Came back to Malaysia to practice medicine. Azarelo muri Malaysia kujirango aze avure. One day, the the youngest little girl, three years old. Haza kuzaka naka gakoga kimya ka itatu. She was found hanging in a clothesline in a backyard garden of a home of a friend. By the, by, the time she, by the time she was brought down from a clothesline, she has died. And the poor lady quickly called my friend. Could you please come? Could you please come? Because I think your daughter is in serious trouble. And he rushed all the way to the home. Saw the doctor. Saw the daughter on the on the on the ground. Her eyes have all flipped up on white. She, she has been dead for almost three, four minutes. Which means that the brain will probably be damaged. And so as a doctor, she grabbed hold of her daughter. She rebuked the spirit of death. And she rushed the doctor to the hospital. For the next number of days, she day and night, keep on praying, keep on praying for the daughter. And she raised many, many intercessors and friends like us to pray for the daughter. And they prayed through the night. Next morning, thank God, she became conscious. She told the father, I could see the time on the clock. 
and she is restored back to health and strength. Mbona ukuntu umwana ari magenda garura ubuzima ndetse n'imbaraga muri we. So today this girl she has her study medicine in Australia. None uyu mwana uyu munsi arimo ariga muri Australia. So we give thanks to God. Amen. Dushima Imana kubwo kurokora uwo mwana. But my friend also tells me this. None ho ishuti yangira mbira ngo even if God would not allow our daughter Sarah to survive to go I will still thank God and believe he is still a good God in spite of that. And this is so important, amen. Because sometimes our prayers we feel may not be answered. But we want to believe this God is a good God in spite of that. That he's got a purpose in everything he allows. Amen. Amen. And so friends, we thank God for the stretching we go through in our lives. That we want to believe this God is still a good God in spite of whatever. Kandi ugakomeza kwizera yuko Imana ikomeza kuba nziza ubwo waca mu bisabite. But friends also we want to thank God for what he is at work in all of us in this world. Kandi kindi ni ikintu Imana yadukoreye mu twese muri iyi isi tuyishimira. What has God done in this world? Ibyo Imana yakoze muri iyi isi ni ibiki? See John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. Muri Yohana gatatu 16 na 17 na 17. Come let's read together. Turasomera hamwe basoma muri verse ya cyongereza. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Turasoma muri muri Yohana igice cya gatatu murongo wa 13 no murongo wa 17 icyanditswe benshi tuzi kuko Imana itatu kuko Imana yakunze abari mwisi cyane byatumye itanga umwana wayo w'ikinege kugira ngo umwizera wese atarimbuka and so we thank God, friends. God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to this whole world. What is His purpose? It is not to condemn us as we see here. But so that we may all be, be saved. That we may all become Christians. That we become followers of Jesus Christ. Now how many of us becoming a Christian is the best thing to happen to you in your life? Can I see your hands? Can I see your hands? Ah, okay, because if your hands not up, I need to pray for you. Amen. 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 Doing Jesus is so good. That's why everywhere I go, I share Jesus. So I'll give you one example. I was flying, okay, from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to Moscow in Russia for me to speak at a conference of Russian pastors and bishops. And what happened? There's a last passenger that come into the plane in Kuala Lumpur International Airport. The plane was packed full of people. But there's one empty seat next to where we are seated. And in walked this passenger into the plane that is packed full of passengers. But this man is very muscular like a lot of Africans. Yeah. And muscular people, they like to wear sleeveless t-shirts. So that you can, they can see their muscles. So I noticed he was walking towards the empty seat. I told my wife, take, you take the aisle seat, I'll sit next to him. And when he sat down, he was very upset about his seat. Because friends, it is in the economy section of the plane. In the center portion of the plane. In, the, in a row of five seats. He is just right in the middle. No wonder he's so upset. And so when he sat down and said, Hi, my name is Daniel. What's your name? He said, My name is Julian. And he was so upset and angry. He said, This is a lousy airline. I, 
I've been asking for a better seat. See what a lousy seat you have given to me. And after a while, right, I said to him, Julian, you know, my name is Daniel. I'm a pastor from Malaysia. You are very special. Out of seven billion people, God take you to sit next to a pastor. Uh, and he said, what do you say? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's not often you get a chance to sit next <laughs> to a pastor. <laughs> but friends, in the process, yeah, okay. In, in the process of talking with him, <laughs> you know what I found out? <laughs> Julian was eight to ten times old England karate champion. And he has got three children at that time. Daughter, 26 years old. Son, 21 years old. The youngest one, son, 19 years old. And all three children are all old England karate champions in the age groups. And I became very careful in talking with him. <laughs> Because I want to keep my nose, boom, my nose is gone. I said, Julian, you're very special that God put you next to a pastor. I share with him Jesus all the way. Halfway on the flight. 35,000 feet above sea level. Julian was in tears. Julian God touched him. I said, Julian, if I'd like to, I'd like to lead you to trust in Christ as Lord and Savior. So he said, okay. And so friends, I led the world karate champion to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life. Because yeah, give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because Julian was World Karate Champion in 2013. So friends, some, some people look very strong on the outside. But they're very soft on the inside. You and I must reach out to share Jesus. Amen. 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 Very, very important. Amen. And so therefore we thank God for what he has done in this world. But finally friends, you and I need to thank God because we can share God's goodness and greatness with everybody around. I, I think of another testimony. This man has got cancer of both kidneys. He was treated by doctor and went to chemotherapy treatment. But it doesn't help him. He was growing weaker and weaker. He consults which doctors. No help to him. So the doctor, the doctor told him he's going to die very soon. And one day the daughter told the father, Dad, why do you go to church to be prayed for? He wasn't a Christian. But because he's so desperate, he'll do anything to be prayed for. So I will ask, Pastor, would you be willing to pray for someone like this? I said, sure, of course. And so when this man came to church, he was holding a walking stick. And he, and he walked like this very, very slowly. He was only 52 years old. With no more hair left because of chemotherapy. But he walked like an old man. And, and so when, when he came in, 
I was told, Pastor, that's the man who wanted to be prayed for. And so when I preached and gave the altar call, this, this man was brought up for prayer. I said, before I pray for you, during the time of worship, I noticed both your hands were raised up. So I said, I thought you're not a Christian. He said, not only my two hands went up. I don't know why. But also, I'm crying away. So I told him, my friend, today is the day. Come back home. This is home for you. The church of Jesus Christ. So I led him to faith in Christ. And I lay hands and pray for him. The power of God hit him. And he, and he fell down under the power of God. After that, every Sunday he came to church. And when the, when the older call is given, he will be the first to come up for prayer. The power of God hit him, touched him, he fell over. Every Sunday, that's what happens. Today, my friends, this man's son has been totally healed by God. His hair has grown back. He went back to work. Today, he joined our mission team to go overseas for mission trips. Today, he served as one of our ushers in church. How many years is that now? 25 years now. Sunny is today about 75 years old. He is fit, healthy, and strong. This is what God wants to do in your life, my life. Amen. So we must go out to share the goodness of God. Because He wants as many people to come to know Him in a wonderful manner. And, and that's why, friends, Paul writes like this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. And what is the Lord's will? It says, it says here, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so friends, God's perfect will is for none to be lost, but everyone to come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so one final story and now I'll end. I was down in Singapore for a meeting. Next morning, I check up from the hotel. A taxi came by. I hopped into the taxi. And I told the taxi driver, could you please take me to Changi International Airport? He said, of course, sir. And, and I start right away. I said, thank you very much for taking me to the airport. By the way, what's your name? He said, my name is No Hisham. A Muslim taxi driver. All these years, I have never met a Muslim taxi driver, except this time, the first time. I said, No Hisham, my name is Daniel, who I'm a pastor from Malaysia. You are very special. Out of 7 billion people, God take a pass to sit in your taxi. And God has sent me to let you know He remembers you, He knows you, and He loves you. And so, no, Hisham was very touched. 
without me saying further no he shall volunteer all this information to me he says sir you know what i'm married actually my wife is blind and she also suffers from diabetes and so three times a week i take her to hospital for dialysis treatment he said that's why i work as a taxi driver because it gives me flexibility of time then he went on further he says, sir, I've got a nine-year-old son. On and off, my son will call me. Daddy, can you please come home? Because I'm very lonely. Now you can't blame the son. Because the mother is blind. The mother could not help him in So on off he calls the father. And the father said to the son. You just have to wait at home until death finishes the duty until at night that comes home. He said, time and again my son will call me. And that's why he breaks my heart. To have to tell my son, sorry, you have to have the wait. And then he went on further to tell me this. He says, Sir, you know what I believe? I'm paying for the sins of my past. See, when I was a teenager, I got involved in drugs. And, and therefore in crime to feed my drug habit. And as a result, I've been arrested by the police again again in Singapore. In fact, I've been thrown in prison again and again. So today, the heartache I'm going through in my life is to pay for the sins of my past. I told him, no, Isham, sometimes we may, be, we may do wrong things. But God has sent me to you to tell you there's help, there is hope, and there is a future for you. Because he says, I share with Jesus all the way to the airport. And challenge you to accept Jesus. He said, okay. I said there's wonderful no Hisham. I want to pray for you now. Be because we are going to arrive at the airport, I pay the taxi fare, I dash in to catch my flight so I don't miss my flight. And then he says, okay, so therefore I'm in a rush, I want to pray for you now. So I asked him this. No Hisham, can you both drive and pray at the same time? He said, Ken. I said, that's, that's wonderful. One more thing, as you drive and pray, make sure you keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open. Otherwise, you'll be dead and I'll be dead because of accident. And so he did that. As I led him in prayer. He, he, he was driving. And his eyes was open. Because my eyes were, because my eyes were open. Because my eyes were open to watch it. His eyes were open. Otherwise he's in trouble. I'm in trouble. Led him in a prayer. When, when we arrived at the airport. I gave him a taxi fare. Before I dare. Oh, he, he held me back and he said this to me he said sir 
I have never met any passenger like you in my whole life. Friends, can I say to all of you, there are many people who look good on the outside. Maybe even very smooth and suave and sophisticated. But you never know what is on the inside. Because there have been hurts and wounds and pains on the inside. And you and I got the greatest news of Jesus Christ to share with everybody around. Let's do it and change the whole world. Amen. Amen. Can Amen. I stand? Let me close in prayer. Let me stand I want to pray for those especially who have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And therefore, if there's anyone this afternoon, afterwards at the count of three, we will raise up a hand and pray for you. You are not a Christian, not born again today. I want to pray for you. That you like to accept Jesus. And if you have three, you raise up hand Are you ready? One, two, and three. Is there anyone here? Can I see your hands? Anyone here? Can I see your hands? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. 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 Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else? Can I see your hands? We're going to pray for you. Those whose hands are up, could you please ask us? Bring them to the front here. Yeah, bring them to the front here. Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you please ask us? Those who are up, could you yeah, just come, just keep as many of you. Just come. Be a big hand to all these people. Come. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come, come. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Come. Anybody else? Come. Come to the front. 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 Yeah. Is there, is there anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Give a big hand to all these wonderful people. Yeah, yeah, just come. Yeah, give a big hand to all these wonderful people. Yeah. And so church, can you reach out your hands to these people? Yeah. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for them. 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 Lord, Lord, cleanse them by the blood of Jesus. And so Holy Spirit, come right now upon each and every one of them. Holy, Holy Spirit, come and fill every one of these. Your power, your anointing will come upon each and every one of them. Yes, Lord, fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. And enable them to walk with you faithfully all the rest of their lives. And enable them to walk with you faithfully all the rest of their lives. Protect them by your power, Father. I pray. And lead them to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help them to be disciples in the life of this wonderful church. Help them to be disciples in the life of this wonderful church. Help them to be disciples in the life of this wonderful church. Help them to be disciples in the life of this wonderful church. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Wow. Give that big hand again, all of them. Eka tukome amashi menshi chane kugawa watili Yesu Christo. One last time, friends. Would you raise up your hands to God? I want to pray for all. Leka muzamu ni viganza vijanyo mgeese kujirango na mge mba heshu mujisha. Father, I pray for all these precious brothers and sisters of mine. Lord, I pray your blessings upon everyone here. Protect them by your power. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, O God. And enable them to live powerfully for you, Father, I pray. That through the lives and witness, signs, wonders, miracles, will take place that you will touch many more people for Jesus Christ and draw them the kingdom of God into this wonderful church called giant temple so bless all these precious ones Father I pray bless their families Bless this great nation of Rwanda. And use it to your honor for your glory, Father. I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.